Hello YouTube, and welcome back to my channel. After finishing a wonderful adventure with my motorbike in the Philippines, cross-circumcising the island of Cebu, I'm now ready for a new and different journey once again. This time I upped my level and decided to explore the very exotic island of Ceylon, in the Indian Ocean, nowadays better known as the country of Sri Lanka. It is also called the Pearl of the Indian Ocean, because of its many countless dreamy beaches and their rich cultural treasures. Including a biodiversity that is simply unmatched, combined with their delicious hearty cooking style and an incredible array of many different tropical fruits, making it a paradise. And last but not least, with its lovely smiling and always helpful people, it is becoming one of my most favorite country to explore. Sri Lanka is currently at the top of the bucket lists of many people from around the world. It is a one-of-a-kind tropical island with diverse and breathtaking landscapes. Furthermore, here I can enjoy a cuisine that is a unique blend of local ingredients and recipes from around the world, and introduced to the island by Indians, Arabs, Portuguese, and many other countries. Sri Lanka also has six archaeological world heritage sites, ranging from the ruins of ancient cities to remarkable temples and monuments. It also has one of the most diverse animal populations on the globe. The island has been inhabited continuously for thousands of years, with the original inhabitants descended from Stone Age hunter-gatherers till around the 5th century BCE. When migration from northern India arrived, forming the foundation of the modern Sinhalese population we can see today. And for me to explore all this in an easy and independent way, I choose to get my scooter and getting now accommodated to the Sri Lanka driving vibe. Which is again driving on the left side of the road. On top of this, this is the country where you give way to the larger vehicles, as size does really matter here. The rule of the bigger, is here the norm, and it is nothing unusual for vehicles to overtake when a bike is oncoming, expecting us bike drivers to move away because we are the smaller vehicle. The roads here is like a grand chessboard, we move where we can, and we don't follow the normal rules of left and right. And as I am driving along I just spotted this shopping complex, it is situated conveniently right next to Nagambo's clock tower intersection. A great place for me to do my last minute shopping before I'm heading out to the Sri Lankan countryside. This place has nearly everything one would need. From shoes, bags, eyewear, mobile phones, SIM cards, phone repair, clothing, jewelry shops and so much more. Of course, bargaining is a must and certainly it is also part of the fun of doing shopping here. Coming back to the rules of driving. It is best to simply trust our instincts, ascertain the direction, and proceed. Sadly but true, adherence to road rules here leads to much misery and occasional fatality. Remember, here in Sri Lanka most drivers don't drive, but just aim their vehicles in the generally intended direction they want to go. Also be aware of pedestrian crossings, and if uncertain, don't stop. The risk of getting bumped in the back if we stop is quite high. And if I need to stop, I certainly stop at the very left of the roadside. The pedestrians here have learned to cross only when traffic is moving slowly or has come to a dead stop. I also learned that blowing my horn is not a sign of protest, as in many other countries. Sri Lankan's toot toot is a way to express an array of emotions, most of the time it's not used as a way of asking pedestrians to get out of the way, but to say hello, I am coming your way. And by any means, as a motorbike driver, for heaven's sake, stay clear of all the buses, as they moving at hell driver speed, caring little, or not at all for the people in front of them. Other than that, Sri Lanka is a lovely country, with mostly friendly people, a rich history and culture and an unbelievable beautiful countryside which we will get to explore together. Starting my Sri Lankan adventure in Nagambo is the perfect introduction to the country and a definite insight into how amazingly friendly the Sri Lankan people are. They are smiling from ear to ear, and are very helpful people, and I'm not talking about the annoying in your face type of helpful, just downright genuine people. And as I can see, the streets here aren't too crowded, as it is the case in the city of Colombo, so driving with the flow of the traffic is quite easy here. Here the main street are scattered with green and red tuk-tuks, and the choices of restaurants serving both international and Sri Lankan specialties is great. 
The guest houses, resorts and family villas are also easily available to a better price as in Colombo. The Nagambo beaches, although they are not the best ones, but they are worthwhile to be explored. Here we can find plenty of spaces, and it is also a good spot to watch the locals, along with the fishermen going about their business. Nagambo also has the advantage of being the seaside town closest to Sri Lanka's Bandaranaike International Airport, and due to its proximity to the airport. It hosts a number of large international hotels, and a strip of shops, bars and restaurants along their lengthy seafront. Nagambo is certainly the best stopping off point for either at the start or the end of a holiday here in Sri Lanka. I just reached the Browns Beach here in Nagambo, and it is one of the best beaches in this area. It seems to me that the beach is kind of a private area, and to gain access I need to purchase my entry ticket to enjoy the golden fine sand and its stunning sunset. I have been told that it is open 24 hours a day, making it a good place for a stroll at sunrise or a walk at sunset, and even for a midnight swim, if you wish so. For my overnight stay I choose the 8 plus motels here in Nagambo, a small family run hotel with good service and clean rooms for a reasonable price. Simply said, it is a great place with good value for my money, in a good location with easy accessibility to other service areas like, supermarkets, restaurants, tour and motorbike rental shops and easy access to the beach. Good morning to today's new day, before I leave Nagambo for my Sri Lanka adventure, I decided to pay a visit to the famous St. Mary's Church here in Nagambo. The city of Nagambo is often called the Little Rome of Sri Lanka, that is due to its reputation for being the home of several churches, countless little shrines, set on every other road corner. As well as for having a predominantly Roman Catholic population. There are more than 25 Roman Catholic churches in the city, like the St. Sebastian Church, the St. Stephen's Church, the St. Anne's Church and the St. Anthony's Church. With the St. Mary's Church being one of the largest cathedrals here in Sri Lanka, and conveniently located between the Main Street and the St. Mary Street, the construction of this church began in 1874, and was completed nearly 50 years later in 1922. It was built in the neoclassical architectural style, featuring large white columns on its main facade.
Inside the church, the alabaster ceilings are beautifully painted with the imagery of important religious saints. And their likenesses can also be found in the sculptures attached to the upper levels. I also learned that the paintings of a local Buddhist painter named N.S. Godaman can also be found on the church ceiling. So it is definitely a place worthwhile to visit and to receive the blessings for my upcoming journey here in Sri Lanka. And again a new morning, today I got up fairly early, packed all my luggage, put it onto the bike, checked out of the guest house, and driving to my favorite eatery, for brunch at the Queen's restaurant at Lewis Place here in Nagambo. After finishing my yummy lunch, I am now ready to roll. I don't know, what's up with the weather today, I am really worried as the sky is already getting very dark, and I am still in the vicinity of Nagambo City. And wow, now the heavens open completely and I have to rush for shelter at a shop understand. Squashed together with several other drenched motorbike riders waiting out the end of the sudden downpour. Finally, 60 minutes later, and the rain stopped as suddenly as it had started, and I managed to continue my journey in the direction of Dambulla. My first stage will take me from Nagambo to Dambulla city, leading through the small back and country roads into the rural countryside. The distance is around 130 kilometers and the drive should take me around 4 to 5 hours, including various stops for photo and video ops and other necessary stuff. After one hour of nicely driving with partly cloudy and blue dry sky, here we go again, but this time it looks much more serious. I know deep down in my guts, this huge black cloud on the horizon is no laughing matter, and makes me now really worried. Bluntly said, this is a monster rolling directly into my direction. And yes, now I am forced to find shelter again from a stupendous downpour. Luckily, I can stop right in front of a grocery and plastic sheet store, here in the city of Dambadinia. They are so kind here, and providing me with shelter and the opportunity to buy plastic sheets to cover all my luggage for protecting all my gears from the rain. 
Not even three minutes later, the rain started here in a really unbelievable full force. Even I traveling a lot, and used to see a lot of bad weather, I must admit, I hardly been in the middle of such a heavy downpour like this one. Rain mist is all over the shop because of the high speed winds combined with gushing rains, battering the whole town like crazy. The only thing now coming to my mind, that this is really a very disastrous start of my journey. And is it even possible, to reach the city of Dambulla, safely and dry, before the nightfall later today?